We are trying to develop uh, some, let's say, new techniques for uh, alternative uh, therapies. And uh, we are, um, let's say, my group now is uh, now focused on the synthesis of nanoparticles for bioimaging application and drug delivery, which means that uh, in case of bioimaging applications, we are able, uh, for example, to to make particles which are luminescent and uh, we can, uh, by simple surface modification, uh, make them mm, mm, anchored to, to uh, chosen uh, organs, for example, so we can anchor molecules to the, let's say, cell membranes and then visualize it. Uh, we can uh, put uh, our particles uh, mm, or target them uh, directly to tumors and uh, uh, visualize, it, visualize it as well and uh, we are able to uh, for example uh, modify surface of nanoparticles with uh, important biological molecules uh, for drug delivery systems so which means that uh, probably if the things will work as it is uh, um, wanted <laughs> so uh, we'll be able, for example, to decrease the concentration of uh, medicines which are taken by, by, uh, by us. Uh, um, and uh, that's how, for example, we can uh, decrease uh, the toxic effects uh, or side effects uh, which are connected with uh, uh, drugs as well, because they are not only helping us, but they can uh, be uh, toxic. We can treat it as a um, core shell structure, for example. So we have the, the, the core, which is uh, crystalline, and uh, um, when the surface modification is finished, so we can uh, consider that, uh, the, that the molecules which are attached to the surface, that they are forming some kind of uh, core around the um, or shell, around the core. But the most common now, they are uh, magnetite particles, for example. Uh, quantum dots, quantum rods, based on uh, cadmium uh, selenide compounds or uh, zinc sulfide. But uh, now we are trying to look for some other kind of materials because uh, those ones, they are uh, rather toxic because they contain heavy, heavy elements. Uh, and uh, now we are more focused on finding the, the more biocompatible materials. Um, which will show uh, less toxic effects in comparison to the uh, to those ones which are um, used now at the moment. And what we do is that we use um, carbon nanotubes as a um, multifunctional transporter to transport whatever therapeutic or uh, magnetite mm. filling into the target tissue, and then we can really on the point do the therapy for this cancer or um, other. Um, diseases. Yeah, for example, diabetes. Uh, yes. So we can uh, modify our particles with yeah. uh, medicines, we, medicine which will regulate uh, the, yeah. the concentration of uh, insulin. In our case, um, nanotransporters with an inner cavity to fill it with the therapeutic or attach the therapeutic on the outside and then deliver it and release it in the target tissue. Tubes, uh, carbon nanotubes, they can be multifunctional, so we can um, vary what we put inside or on the outside of the um, carbon shell. Mm -hmm. And with the magnetite particles, they are useful for hypothermia. So you put this um, super paramagnetic particle into the target tissue, and you switch on a very, very high field, a magnetic field. You um, have alternating um, field mm. directions, mm. and this um, somehow it's not yet clear produces heat. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah, high temperatures in a range of 40 degrees Celsius, something like that, and this burns away locally the tissue. Mm -hmm. okay. And oh. this we can do as well with the carbon nanotubes, but they are also um, working as um, therapeutic transporters. So that's why multifunctional. We can. The idea is to tailor the um, functionality of these transporters mm -hmm. depending on the type of disease we want to cure. Yeah, and we can, uh, for example, prepare the core shell structures, uh, which means that, for, for example, you will have the magnetite, uh, magnetic core and, uh, for example, silica, porous silica uh, shell, 
which means that you can, uh, for example, use the magnetic uh, properties of magnetite and uh, load uh, a shell, a porous shell, with the medicine. And, uh, for example, you can, uh, mm, with a magnetic field, you can uh, just uh, track the particles to the to the cancer tumor, for example. Yes, so what I do is basically find out in the first place how do the nanoparticles or nanotubes, in my case, enter the cell. So that might be important um, to have time constants, to know how long should the particle circulate, how much time does it need to um, cross the cell membrane, how long does it move inside, how much time has it to go outside and um, yeah, what happens outside to the nanoparticles aggregate inside? Do they stay there? That's all important towards determining is it toxic or not? And what is the clearance rate out of the body? And there are so many aspects in between. They all have to be studied and it is really crucial for clinical application to know what does the stuff inside your body and what, how do I get it out? It's quite new field now yeah. and uh, we don't know much. Uh, about, uh, for example, cytotoxic effects of the particles. So we have uh, some really important issues to solve. And, uh, one of them yeah. is uh, accumulating of the particles yeah. uh, within our body. So yeah, most publications now are at the stage where they incubate it into cells, into yeah. normal um, cult cell culture, not in living animals, and there it's um, the particles remain in the in the petri dish, mm. and in the yeah. animals there. Um, so there are indications that uh, it is cleared through the body outside uh, via excretion, but some then state it stays inside, so mm -hmm. it's um, not yet at clinical trials. And with uh, there are currently um, magnetic particles in use also in clinical applications, and they remain there. And then it's important to know, do they cause inflammation, do they not? If they stay there and don't cause anything, why, why care? And yeah. in most cases, cancer appears after a certain period, most time at the same, at the same location, and then we can use the particles again oh. when they stay there. So I, that's the uh, therapeutic approach they have now in Berlin that's working quite nice with brain tumors. I mean, there are already the clinical trials mm. going on. It might take not 10 years, but 20 years, and so not with our type of nanoparticles, but other nanoparticles. It's future treatment and I have another let's say 50 years until I get cancer probably so I guess then we will have <laughs> <laughs> nanoparticle treatment and I, I'd rather choose this instead of surgery then. This is uh, uh, cost uh, because we are trying to make our lives uh, better and uh, easier. It's challenging. It's so of place. course we are all sometimes upset because we don't not explain, but then it helps you to figure out why doesn't it work or how can I make it. That's science. Science is yeah. about um, yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes it takes quite a lot, long of time to, to to get an idea how to solve the problem, but when it comes, then yeah. It's sometimes patience, mm -hmm. and um, you need to be excited about your topic, and you need to have this uh, curiosity.